Hello there and welcome to the European Papers. What a week of surprises it's been. Not only that Notre Dame player and his girlfriend with a whole new definition of makeup sex, but of course the biggest shock of all, which came in Germany. And that's where we begin today. The arrival in Munich of a coaching legend. Tanned, well-traveled, devilishly attractive, Sven Juran Eriksson. Why, who do you think you're? Yep, Sven back in the game at Munich 1860 this week. You know, Munich's other side, who are currently in Bundesliga 2, but says build, have no fear. Star coach Ericsson is here. Headline, curiously, is 1860, are they being blackmailed by their investor? This after their uh, Jordanian funder had threatened to pull out his money if they didn't take Sven. 1860 already have a manager, though. So, uh, as the bemused chairman Otto Steiner explains, we haven't decided on the position Sven will take up, but it'll be a role behind a desk. I seem to remember Freer Alam saying something similar. Amazing stuff, but of course, the very next day, though, came the real surprise of the season, Guardiola to Bayern. A surprise, that is, unless you'd been reading pretty much all the papers in Germany and Italy uh, this week. They'd known about it, indeed, from Monday night when the story began to break on Italian television after Guardiola cancelled a meeting with AC Milan to travel to Bavaria. Build, indeed, on Monday, we're reporting that uh, Pep's agent was in Munich, whereas he claimed to be on a pleasure cruise in Frankfurt. Denial? No, the river mine. Gazeta on Tuesday, meantime, reporting Guardiola Uberales, it's all but settled. And again, build on Tuesday, Guardiola Bayern, is it finally on? Which, which makes the English papers on Wednesday quite amusing. What with their why I must boss club in England, Fergie convinced me. And what's this one here from The Guardian? Guardiola keen to coach in the Premier League. Pep erroneous, as it all turned out. Now, to be fair, Pep had denied a move to Bayern previously when asked about it last month, but that must now rank as his first deployment of a false nine in his new position. And now that it's all confirmed, what does Europe make of it anyway? Well, says Gazetta, it's Kaiser Pep. And they call it an event that will have a revolutionary effect on European football. In France, they only give it the entire front page of L'Equipe. It's the natural choice, they say. Firstly, because Bayern is the closest thing out there to Barcelona. And secondly, because what with financial fair play and the Euro crisis, right now the Bundesliga is the safest place to be. Spanish agree that it's not necessarily the most adventurous choice Pep could have made. El País, Guardiola prefers Bayern to the noise of England. Marca, headline Pepe Nazo, their editorial, don't get me wrong, Bayern's a great club, but he's taken the easy route. They're big, they've got no powerful rivals. It's all a little bit disappointing. El Mundo Deportivo, meanwhile, with hair Pep, wonder where I can get a bottle of that. It's a convincing choice because he won't have to face Mourinho and they reckon that he might bring in his friend Raul, who by now speaks fluent German, as his assistant. And Sport, across uh, Barcelona there, have Pep will earn loads of money at Bayern and they explain to their readers what are Bayern in Germany. They're not like Barcelona, they're not like Real, they're like both put together. And they reckon he could maybe take Neymar there to the Bavarian city. By the way, for anyone keen to get ahead on the next big managerial shocker, how about this earlier in the week? From sport, Mourinho's replacement will be Mickey Laudrup. Ooh. As for the Germans, well, of course, this week, they're over the moon at this new demonstration of kraut clout. Frank Freiter Allemagne saying German football as a whole could not have a greater seal of approval. Bild, who salute the current Bayern man, Jupp Heinkers, as a legend, call the Guardiola move, the biggest coaching coup of all time. This news was like a bomb, says Bild, above all in England and Spain. Die Welt say the club have prevailed against the shakes of Manchester and Paris. Behold, they say, hands buried in the pockets of his casual tight-cut pants, that thin tie hanging on a flat midriff, Guardiola, pepismus, more than a footballing style, also an attitude, a kind of culture. So Deutsche who put football on their front page for once, say Munich citizens have better up their game if a modernist man of the world like Pep is coming to town. But ask the paper, Guardiola can do Barcelona, but does that mean that he can also do Bayern? Bet Sven could. Well, overall, anyway, a great signing for Bayern and all German football fans. But with all of that, there's not too much room for the week's other big stories. Uh, stories like... Silvio Berlusconi saying sorry to Balotelli for calling him a bad apple. And the very next day, launching a bid for him and David Beckham. Ask your parents. Or this in L'Equipe. 
Who's this going hunting in Sweden in a full Arctic onesie? Ibra! Ducks, I'd imagine, because he doesn't like the big games. All this from France again, fascinating stuff from L'Equipe magazine on the three sons of the World Cup winning team of 98, Enzo Zidane, Marcus Turam, and Juan Jokaev. Hmm, just like the song, except there's not anymore. And anyway, uh, all three are rising through the junior ranks, Enzo at Real Madrid, Jokaev at St Etienne, and Marcus Turam at Sochaux. Curiously, all three of them are right-footed and all three like to play attacking midfield, with Turam in particular touted as an up-and-coming number 10. Turam as a number 10, that's almost as weird, says Lekeep, as Zidane in goal. But that, curious enough, is where Zizou's other son, Luca, is currently playing between the posts for Real's 14-year-olds. My word, eh? Makes you feel old. That's all we got anyway for this week's paper review. We'll be back in seven days' time with another batch of continental headlines. Hopefully, you'll be joining us then.